Hello everyone, I'm Anne Adams and I'm a small group leader in Oldham and a welcomer in the car park for the Manchester Central Congregation. I'm going to read you an account of something that happened to Dave and I a few years ago. It was the middle of a cold February night when the phone call came. Dave thought he ought to answer. Our son is your son is very ill in hospital in London, may not survive the night. After asking some questions, Dave came to wake me. Wake up, our son is very ill in hospital. Waking up, trying to take it all in, having lots of questions. We need to be there. Waking up a bit more. We need to pray. We prayed. In somewhat of a dazed, we dressed and packed our suitcases, took the car for some petrol. By now it was enough of a civilised hour to wake the church to pray. We set off down the motorway. Something was happening up ahead, a slowing full stop. We sat and waited and waited. We need to be in London, I fretted. Dave said, no, the important thing is that God is there. Yes, he is there. He is always looking after us. The sun started to rise. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, I sang in my head. I couldn't remember any other words, but I knew it was about the goodness of God. Then some words sprang into my head. God spoke to me. Don't be afraid, only believe. I believed. I know those words. They're from the account of the healing of Jairus' daughter, Mark chapter 5. I found it on my phone, verses 22 to 43. Jesus was on his way to heal the girl when there was a delay. Then men came saying, your daughter is dead. But Jesus ignored what they said and encouraged Jairus with these words. Don't be afraid. Only believe. So we believed. Eventually the traffic moved, but we couldn't use the motorway. We crossed the country on all manner of winding lanes as the snow of the beast from the east began to fall. Eventually we reached the hospital car park. The journey had taken twice as long as usual, but we still believed. A man approached me and asked for a £1.50 for bus fare to get home. Just in case you're, you think I'm somehow perfect, this is what I thought. My son is upstairs hanging between life and death. Do you think I care if you need money to get home? I said nothing and gave him two pounds. We went upstairs. We were given a friendly welcome. They had seen concerned relatives before. We put on the PPE and went in. There was our son, surrounded by a vast array of intensive care equipment. We asked lots of questions. They gave us a room to stay in the hospital, which was such a blessing. At the time, I thought it was because we had come from a distance. Later, I realised it was because they did not know how long he would survive. Gradually, the story came out over a couple of weeks. He had been ill with a chest infection. Living on his own, he was too unwell to take care of himself and had missed meals. His diabetes had gone out of balance and he ended up collapsed on the floor. His friends had noticed that not only was he not replying to messages, but he wasn't picking them up either. And they became concerned. Two of them went round taking the key to his flat and found him on the floor. They rang 999 and a paramedic came at once. It took four ambulances and three fire engines to get him out over the balcony of his flat and take him to hospital. Three nurses cared for him all night. The consultant told us he couldn't guarantee that he would survive. Don't be afraid, only believe. And so he survived. He was very ill for a long time. He couldn't see us, couldn't speak, but soon he could hear and squeeze our hands. We stayed in the hospital. Gradually he made progress. 
After four weeks, we thought we needed to move out of the hospital room to make room for other needy relatives. God had provided for us in advance with friends who lived nearby who had offered us a room. There was no rent to pay, but we were asked to help with the shopping. We felt it would be right to give £100 up front as a token of goodwill. Uh, we were just crossing the road to go to the ATM when a call came in from Dave Sharp, finance chief at church. Someone had put £100 in the Sunday collection for our benefit. I'd never understood that verse about the ploughman overtaking the reaper in Amos 9 verse 13. But here it was in action. Thank you, God. And thank you, generous person. Eventually, our son came out of hospital and went back to work some months later. We came home to resume our normal lives. None of us are the same. We had lived through a miracle and proved the faithfulness of our God time and again. Don't be afraid, only believe. Amen.